Hey guys, Sari here. So welcome to the VR Tech channel. In one of my recent videos, we actually talked about the fact that virtual reality headsets are shrinking down and getting smaller and smaller, lighter and less bulky than before to be easier to use, easier to wear even for a long time period. And you can check out the video over here if you didn't already. And many people in that video, in the comments, were actually joking about the fact that hey, maybe we're gonna see like uh, uh, contact lenses with displays inside. Like, <laughs> uh, well, it's actually a thing. Mojo Vision just presented their contact lenses with a display inside to be used for AR and VR application. And in this video, we're gonna talk about how this is even possible and how is this technology almost here already? Well, let's discover it together, right? Let's get into it. So let's get to it right away. How is that even possible that companies are struggling that much to actually shrink down the VR headsets to make it smaller, easier to wear, to see holograms better, to see our virtual reality world better? And then a company just came out with a solution that actually skips all that process and, uh, well, just put contact lenses in and you can see and do stuff in the virtual world. Well, this company didn't come out from nowhere. Mojo Vision is working from four or five years on a way to actually fit a display, actually to make a display that can fit a pair of contact lenses. And of course they managed to do it after different tries and after studying, of course, how the eye works, how to make it possible for our eye and how to make also our vision better. So let's start to talk about the technology itself. What you see here is actually the smallest display ever made on Earth with the, one of the highest PPI possible. To go in numbers, the display is smaller than half a millimeter. It's gonna sit right in front of your pupil and it has a PPI, so pixel per inch density of 14,000. That is impressive. If you Think about it like a phone, usually they're about 350 PPI, for example. And if we talk about virtual reality headsets, the HTC Vive Pro has a PPI of 1001. So this is 14 times more dense as a display than the Vive Pro. So for sure, forget about screen door effect and all those stuff, because those are not gonna be a thing anymore. And now talking about pixels, of course, being that small, we don't have many, many pixels. We have 70,000 pixels. That is still impressive for something that is much smaller than a millimeter. So this is not just the smallest display ever made. This is actually also the most energy efficient display because if you are inside a contact lens, if you have to sit in the middle of your pupil in a way that you can't really see the display, but just what this display is projecting without obscuring your vision. Of course, you also have to fit the battery or some sort in there to make it work. And of course, you can just put a phone battery in the cable that goes inside your eye. That would be pretty weird indeed. So they managed to make the display very energy efficient because sitting that close to the eyes and projecting the image right in the fovea, that is the part of the eye with better clarity for our vision. I'm using a lot of technical and medical terms that I, I know like just a little, so uh, don't quote me too much on stuff, but uh, I'm gonna leave the article under with all the information for sure, so you can check it out yourself. But again, sitting very, very close to your eye, that means that they don't have to project too much light, also because it's gonna create maybe the problems also for the vision if that happened. So that's why it's very, very efficient. And they have a coil uh, going around, as you can see from the image, that works as a battery. And the battery life, if we can call it battery life for these contact lens, is at around 24 hours. So it's already impressive because you can wear it for very, very long. And to recharge it, you just put it in their housing that is similar to the one that is from your AirPods, for example, for your wireless uh, uh, headphones. 
and uh, well, you recharge them and then you put it on again for the next day. And that's very impressive indeed. Now the vision part is very interesting because they went of course from just showing a static image to actually showing videos and informations and now it's just a regular display that works like a, any other display. And that's very interesting because you can show information in your vision, you can also enhance like the light of the environment around you so you can actually see in the dark for example and that's very interesting it's like some superhuman stuff or if you have some visual problem they can help to restore your vision they actually also zoom on things and uh, see things better because they can project the image to our eye in a different way and the most interesting thing for me is that it works like a regular display and because it sits directly on your eye if you want to just see the content that is projected to your eye what you have to do is just to close your eye and welcome to the oasis i guess but now how do you interact with things well of course they built in also eye tracking so you're able just to look at something and interact with the things you're looking at in your vision so uh, you want information about the sky uh, the weather you just look up look at the weather and uh, all the informations are gonna come out very easy and uh, that's how they're working on the ui to make it easy simple and not to be too much information in there because they don't want to have the same problem that we have with the phone where there are too many informations and then they are overwhelming but they want you to focus also on the real world in front of you to make your vision better, to make your work better and to make maybe your entertainment or informations better. Just everything in front of you. But now, how does this work? Where is all the computing power? Of course, you can put a processor in there that would be a little too much. Maybe we're gonna write that in a, in a few hundred years, but right now, like we can't really scale down a processor that much. So what's happening is these contact lenses are receiving wirelessly all the information from a neck device that you're gonna have, of course, around the neck. And that device right now will be connected to your phone for all the computing power. So the computing power go to their neck, the neck transmits all the information to your eyes, and then you have your vision and you have all the information or uh, stuff, the holograms that you need. And in the future, of course, probably they're gonna put the complete computing unit around the neck and then you're not gonna need your phone anymore. Now, everything sounds amazing, of course, but when is this gonna be ready? Uh, well, actually, it's pretty much ready right now. The only problem, they have to go through uh, different certifications because uh, being a contact lens, it actually goes in the medical stuff, and so they need a medical certification to then be able to sell it as a medical thing, and then in the future, being able to sell it as a consumer thing. So even if the product is pretty much ready, they just have to add the eye tracking directly in there in something that will fit your eyes, of course, is not ready yet to be sold. So you're not gonna be able to just go out and buy it right now. Also, the first version would be pretty much to solve all the vision problems, so it will be much more medical. And then we're gonna get to different applications in the future for AR or just information on your vision. That's very, very interesting. Also because the roadmap is not that far away. But then to use it as a VR headset, well, probably you're gonna have to wait a little more, even if the PPI is impressive, even if it has a good resolution, this display is not made yet for media consumption as it is. So don't expect to watch a movie yet in a movie theater, just closing your eye or just play Boneworks or Half-Life Alex in there. For that, there's gonna take some time, probably evolution on the display. But if there's on this situation, on this quality right now, I can't even imagine what it's gonna be in three, four years, given the fact that it's four or five years that they worked on it. If we wait a little longer, well, things gonna get very, very interesting. So guys, what do you think about this contact lenses idea? Uh, does it freak you out? Do you think that it's weird to put a display directly in front of your eyes? I never wore 
contact lenses in my life. So I, I'm kind of weirded out to just put that like a finger in my eyes for, to put it on. So that's probably is gonna be the worst step and doing doing again every day. But for who is used to it, probably it's not a big deal. Let me know. And also, isn't it interesting that some companies are just trying to shrink down our VR headsets to goggles? Some are just trying to make possible to see holograms like HoloLens, for example, Magic Leap, directly in front of you uh, with something that you can wear all day. And instead, this guy, Mojo, just came out from studying from five years and they came out with a solution that just sits in your eyes. I think that is impressive and uh, like I, I can't wait to see it in person, for real. But yeah, anyway guys, that was all. I hope you enjoyed it. For me, it was very interesting to go through this topic because I found it very, very interesting and for sure something that we're gonna see in the future and just the idea of closing your eyes and get in this virtual reality world is just unbelievable and I feel like it's like compared to dreaming probably in the future we're gonna act our dreams and have a I don't know a game in there instead <laughs> that would be very nice indeed so uh, during the night you can actually play video games all day that's pretty nice all night but yeah let me know what you think about it in the comment below and as always guys if you liked the video like if you didn't like the video dislike subscribe to the channel for more about VR tech and I see you guys in the next video thanks for watching Ciao!